this spell right. doesn't work. It's never worked. No one has ever cast it and had it do something. Why is it wasting paper space? I don't. That's I don't yeah, that get is mind boggling because this was. I mean, we're not the only ones talking about this, right? I mean, this is the, the reason they're making a revised edition is to cover these sorts of problems. I mean, fine traps, garbage, and it's and it is not alone. Uh, yeah. Robert Bevan here, author of the Caverns and Creatures series of comedy fantasy novels and short stories. With me is Sam West, and today we are going to be talking about the new revised uh, 2024 Player's Handbook. Hooray! Huzzah! It's finally here. Yeah, it's been a long way, but we finally got copies in our hands, and they are... Yeah, we got thoughts. We got appealing feelings and opinions. Uh, you're going to see lots of us talking about all of these changes in depth, I'm sure, on this channel as the weeks go by. But this is kind of like... Overall impressions, favorite things, not favorite things, things we wish changed, things that we wish didn't. You know, those are the kind of goal of this video. Yeah. Uh, uh, you got some opening thoughts? Have you had yeah. time to go through it all? Sure. I think a uh, way to start, I do want to say I like most of the update. I don't think it's enough. That's where I've been since they announced they were doing like this have Z's you can backwards compatible idea of, oh, you can still use all the old stuff. It'll be perfectly fine. That's not universally true. And there still isn't a clean transition between a lot of the stuff that they were like moving towards in this edition and where we landed. But I do think while I'm going to complain a lot, um, I would say I would rather play this edition than five as it stands. So I do think this is like a meaningful upgrade that does more improve the game. And I there's a lot of discourse that is fairly against this edition. Um, I don't think it's worse. I think it's usually just a little bit better. And I do think it'll be a pretty easy transition for a lot of players to make. So if you're on the fence as to whether or not you should try this out, you can try little bits of it out. You can take what you like. You can play yeah. with it a bit. And if you're starting a campaign from fresh, I would recommend just use the subclasses in this book, use the rules in it. And I think you'll have a better time than if you just use like the old 2014 PHP, right? 2012, whenever it was. Um, yeah. What about you? I mean, I, I like a lot of the changes they made, um, especially, you know, with some of the subclasses. I, I'm, you say they didn't go far enough. I'm kind of glad because this isn't a new edition. This is a revised edition and so uh, i like that it aims to be backwards compatible and uh it's it's not the changes aren't too jarring for me to feel like i'm i'm playing a different version that's fair i think that that audience is who they wanted to hit right they wanted people that already bought into the game to be able to keep to be able to like very easily adjust to an updated system um I'm of the opinion that there are some core problems with this rule set, and there have been since day one. The short rest, long rest system is the easiest one I can point to to be like, people just aren't playing with these rules the way that they were conceived of, right? right. The idea of eight encounters per long rest or whatever just never has been... <laughs> a lot of encounters. Like, even the adventure modules don't have that many encounters between rests, right? And those are supposed to be the books that show you how to play the game. So, like, they're... this does make some adjustments like band-aids on that system this does help things like monk this helps things like warlock with their short rest mechanics get a little bit more stuff it doesn't fix the core problem and it keeps us a little bit it, it feels like we've been other systems have passed this in terms of you know innovation the pathfinder 2 three action system is a a really clean easy design that felt like the next evolution of this kind of game system this system not adopting three action and just staying the action, bonus action, reaction, object interaction, real awkward clunkiness. That hurts. I would have loved to see this move to three action. I would have loved to see this move to a long rest and encounter powers maybe come back. Maybe we get the idea that you can do this thing when you roll initiative. You get your key points back. We see monk features kind of do that. They kind of dip their toes into these big system overhauls. Gave them here and there as little band-aids, but I don't know. I think we could have still kept people on board with system over system overhauls that make this a better cohesive idea that make the game easier to play and easier to dm um, but we didn't get that instead we got no the fifth edition combat's more or less exactly the same um but we've cleaned up a lot of it which you know that's what we got i got to live with that yeah 
Uh, well, may- maybe in uh, 6E we'll, we'll get these changes. Nope, this is it. They've just already... They've declared this is the last edition of Dungeons and Dragons and that they're going to update this forever. So hypothetically, this is just going to get like in 20 years, it's going to get another patch like this. It's going to be like, oh, this is 5.40 and it's the next update to fifth edition. Which they, is the next they, update to they declare a lot. I'll, uh, yeah, I'm not I'm not taking that to the bank. Yeah, I, I wouldn't invest in that idea either. And five years, we might see them completely go back and be like, actually, this was kind of a crap decision. We are making a new system. Yeah. <laughs> Who knows? Uh, so here, how about we dive in like section by section and just talk about overall overall thoughts. So I don't think playing the game really changes all that much, right? Like the core rules, are there any core rule updates that you're like, wow, this is so revolutionary. We should talk about it from just like a playing the game perspective. Uh, I have anything? I haven't gone as deep into the book as you have. I don't think that's fair. I generally don't think there's that big of changes, right? Invisibility got a little bit of a tune up. Hiding got simplified a little bit, but I just think there were a lot of common sense updates. I don't think again, well, did invisibility get the, the tune up it needed. They brought, they added a little line of text that says a creature that can't see a creature that can somehow see an invisible creature that cr- the invisible creature doesn't benefit from invisibility against that creature. Yes. Okay. They that's- updated it sensibly. That's what it just should have been ruled as forever. Everyone just yeah. ruled it that way anyway, but now it is actually written that case. All right, so invis- um, invisibility matters. That's good. Yes. Uh, I think a more interesting topic to touch on is the new backgrounds. So backgrounds now, mm-hmm. everyone gets the origin feats, which we kind of saw on ramped in a lot of the newer books. Right. So like in Strict Save and Curriculum of Chaos and Dragonlance and all of the most recent setting books, they gave you backgrounds that came with feats and those feats build into other things. Those were sort of, it felt like the playtest of origin backgrounds. And I think they make perfect sense. We have a ton of videos where like this would be great. I'd be great as a background feat. A lot of them got grandfathered in to be background feats. Uh, overall, do you think it's debt positive? Do you miss the old backgrounds? Do you miss Bond's flaws or anything like that? Because they removed the Bond's flaws, uh, all that kind of stuff. Um, no, I don't really miss any of that. I uh, I like how they... Yeah, I like that they've categorized the feats like they have. I think they could have went... Again, I think they could have done more with it. I think we could have had more than just origin and then the rest. I guess there's fighting styles, because fighting styles are now a kind of feat. And but there's, there's uh, epic boon feats. Yeah, which is just they took the epic boons for the DMG, yeah. updated them a bit, and then slammed them here as their how upper level play works. And I think every feat now comes with an ability score bump, right? It looks like that, yeah. I didn't notice any that didn't, but that will make the pain of not getting an ability score bump way, way lessened. And also, just if you're going to take anything away from this video, uh, you should always start with odd modifiers now. Like, you want whatever your best attributes are to be odd so that they can bump up to even. You want to start with, like, 17s and 15s so you can get a feat and increase your ability score. Right. Um, that's all well and good. Fine with all that. Overall, big fan of that decision. Uh, how about then moving past backgrounds, uh, classes. Are there any standout classes where you're like, wow, this is so much better. I would actually consider playing this now. Do you think the cut, like they cut a bunch of subclasses for wizard and cleric? Do you think that was a net positive decision? Is everyone getting four subclasses right? I don't know. Let's talk about it here. All right. But I mean, that goes back to the backwards compatibility. I mean, just they, if they didn't include a subclass in this book, you can still play the old version of it. I guess you just like for a cleric or warlock, you have to you know, move your first feature down to level three or something. Which What's makes a lot of them a lot worse. Oh, and yeah. I, I would agree with that sentiment, but some of the spells that those old classes got got new printings. So, like, if you get any Conjure spell as part of a spell list, and it wasn't included in this book, um, or sorry, it, it is included in this book, it isn't really backwards compatible because the old subclass should be using the new subclass abilities, which does change the functionality of a lot of it, right? To say these things are just really easily backwards compatible, just, it isn't true. Uh, the War Domain Cleric is going to play very differently getting its features at third level than it does at first level. And like, you could use it, you could work a little bit to make it happen, but I don't, I don't know. If I were DMing this edition, I wouldn't want to, if I I already have to get my players to buy into this thing, I don't want to also have to go like, okay, so for you specifically, you want to play an old War Domain Cleric when everyone else wants to you play with the new PHB. I'm going to bend over backwards to make sure all of your features work as intended. Not, I want, I don't want to have to check through everything. I want to read all the old spells again. I don't have to go back into my 2012 player handbook to be like, well, do these things still work? What was changed here? Or can we use the ones in the 2014 handbook? Can we do these in the 2024? It's a headache, right? A little bit. It, it, it's potentially a headache. I mean, that's a... Uh... 
I don't know though. I mean, if if you're not doing that, then there's so much you're not working with. So many uh, you know options that you that are just now off the table. I don't like that. Okay. I so this is a whole video we could have on, and it's what subclasses do we miss, and what ones do we think are like good riddance. I do think, honestly, most of the subclasses they opted not to include are kind of good riddance. No one was playing that crap anyway. Like, oh no, nature domain's not here. Three <laughs> people on Earth have played that option. Like, I do but, uh, think they. they do a Shadow monk's not here, and uh, and I, I'm actually kind of. Uh, I did a video with Cameron about uh, the new monk, and um, like you know, the the actual monk class feels a lot better than it did, especially with the improvements they made to the subclasses they did include. Uh, but yeah, I'm, I'm, I miss Shadow Monk. Like now Shadow that Monk I is still here for the record, they did change its features, but it is oh, it is still an option. Shadow Monk was take. one of the monks. Yep, it's Mercy oh. Shadow Elements and Open Hand are the four that they. Included. Oh shucks! All right, never mind. Basically, um, if an if a subclass or if a class had three or fewer subclasses, they got all of those three reprinted. So like Fighter right. gets Battlemaster Champion, Knight still uh, Rogue still gets Arcane Trickster, Assassin, and Thief. They just also get a fourth now. But things like again. Um, Wizard and Cleric are the two that had a lot of cuts because they had like eight each. So like Necromancer, right. for example, they're not being a a PHB Necromancer. I do find a little bit odd. Like that's a very core fantasy to a lot of people. Like I'm a big fan of undead. I want to do stuff with zombies and skeletons and stuff. You can do it with animate dead still. They barely changed that spell for some reason. Although I think it could use a tune up. But and I do. I would like to have there to be a PHB Necromancer option, and there isn't because instead they brought an Abjurer and Diviner and evoker and i'm like this selection doesn't make a ton of sense to me but okay uh it's whatever. different example though uh like a swarm keeper ranger drake warden ranger like those are like two really big um you know uh archetypes that you know good ranger archetypes that i, you know, I might want to play uh, yeah I mean, so that at least that option is all at third level and uses mainly stuff from Tasha's. So basically anything that used stuff from Tasha's and the the more recent books, there is better Batworks compatibility for those, right? It's a little bit easier to get the th level features at third level. Like those mm. subclasses are a little bit easier to on-ramp. I still would be a little bit like, well, we have to still check all the spell lists, but it's, those ones are a little bit more permissible to me. I do wish they were in this book instead of like Hunter. Hunter probably could have got cut, right? I like like they could, they, yeah. But what if you just baked Hunter's features into Base Ranger? Yeah. Right. Like I think there were probably better ways to do that, especially if they wanted to sell Ranger as an actual more magical, more magical class. Like Paladins got to be a more magical class with the first level spell slots and stuff. There's probably a way they could have done that. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. For it, it, there's pros and cons to it. I think uh, more often than not, though, it, the system is benefiting from everyone getting four subclasses and them all being some of the more popular ones. Um, and I do ones... believe uh, there will be more subclasses yeah, sure. in the future. For sure. I will be really, really, really annoyed if we get a book that is just Tasha's Cauldron of Everything too, and they just take all the subclasses from Tasha's Cauldron of Everything, barely touch them, and put them in the new edition. I'll be yes. irate. And I have a real hunch that kind of thing is coming. <laughs> yeah. So... Like, um, one of my big complaints about yes. all these subclasses is a lot of them read exactly the same and don't have meaningful upgrades, like meaningful updates to be in this new system, this new version of fifth edition. And they, they should have. Like, I think, great or Fiend Warlock, to me, they tuned it up a bit. So now you can get your temporary HP whenever something within five feet of you dies, if your mm -hmm. ally killed it. Uh, that's not good enough. That doesn't fix that option's problems. They should have given some meaningful reworks. Like, I would say, like, uh, the Warlock, the Archfey Patron, that's a meaningful rework. There should have been more of those. Yeah. Champion didn't get meaningfully reworked in a way that it needed to. Battlemaster yeah. has a lot of features that are still crap, even though it gets, you know, the, its list of cool maneuvers. There should have been better fixes in here for a lot of these options they just let be. Like, we can move into spells. We're going to well, be talking about this shortly. The same thing about spells. The, uh, I was unimpressed with a lot of the changes they failed to make. Yeah, I am baffled that they released so many non-functional spells still. Like, they could have just removed them from the book and saved printing, and or no one would have changed missed them. them. I would have been an... I would rather them not be here than be here in this state, is where I'm at, right? Like, yeah. Bind Traps is the obvious one that, like, oh, they just didn't update it. It's just exactly... <laughs> this spell doesn't work. It's never worked. 
No one has ever cast it and had it do something. Why is it wasting paper space? I don't. That's I don't yeah, that is mind boggling because this was. I mean, we're not the only ones talking about this, right? I mean, this is the, the reason they're making a revised edition is to cover these sorts of problems. I mean, fine traps, garbage, and it's and it is not alone. Uh, yeah, we're, that's another video I think we're going to do. Is, uh, you know, spells that uh needed to be upgraded. I mean, we'll have a whole video. Yeah, yeah. I again, we'll go dive into it on a, a separate video and talk some specifics because I think it's worth talking about in more specifics. But it, it's definitely a big miss. What do you think about the feed nerfs? So we saw sharpshooters no longer getting plus ten damage. Great weapon masters no longer getting plus ten damage. Lucky has been entirely reworked. Thank God. Um, uh, these do you are. Care? Yeah, I, I I miss sharpshooter, but um, it's probably better for the game and it. it and it's like now you don't feel like you have to get sharpshooter or great weapon master and you're you you can go a different way and not feel like you're missing out on something that is going to cripple you for not having yeah i definitely think they did a better job making all the feats seem a bit more appealing mm -hmm. and that's particularly good for the casters there it is definitely going to now be this game is better for casters than it's ever been though right given that there aren't these hugely powerful build around feats like sharpshooter and Webmaster master doing butts loads of damage we are gonna see the full casters who didn't get nerfed at all <laughs> get a lot more play right like they're just gonna feel even more there's gonna be even a wider disparity i think in the upper tiers than there already was that's my guess at least uh, i haven't played not, the system yeah. the upper tiers yet but that's what it looks like right yeah, that's a good point. It'll be better for low tier tables. It'll be better for tables where you have one optimizer and a bunch of non-optimizers, right? Somebody mm -hmm. that wants to try and do the big busted stuff. They're going to be worse with crossbucks than they were before. They're going to be worse with, you know, all the little feats that got some changes. Um, they're not going to be, like, running the table at third level because the variant human's no longer a thing and origin feats sort of fixed a lot of those problems. But it is still going to... It's the not giving... Like I would have rather have seen the powerful feats like Great Weapon Master and Sharpshooter, their damage bumps. I'd love to see them as feats that you needed a prereq for. Like I would love yeah. that there was something after Sharpshooter that was you can forgo attacks to a boatload of damage or something, right? Mm -hmm. Like if you once per turn, if you hit, if you go to attack again, instead you can double this thing's damage. Give me some kind of cool build around high damage feats that marshals have a better chance of competing in the upper tiers. Whereas now well, you don't add plus 10 to the six attacks you're making, so you're doing 60 less damage around, so that's worse whenever the full casters were your direct competition and still right around side the damage you're doing. So, like, that's so, a problem, how is right? That, um, yeah, potentially. How is that supposed to work with uh, the backward compatibility, though? Like, if, there's, if they just straight up didn't include a feat in this... That's why it doesn't. Right? That's why the system isn't backwards compatible. Because they reprinted a bunch of things. It, it, backwards compatibility, to me, indicates that all of the things that I had before work now. That just isn't true. Right? I can't have Conjure Woodland Beings anymore because there's a new Conjure Woodland Beings. Some of the right. biggest drama that happened recently was d and Beyond is auto-updating all of the 5th edition spells that got updated to have the new text. So Conjure My Elementals doesn't function the way it used to. Good riddance. Like, Conjure Animals should not work the way that it did in 5th edition. Yeah. That is not an okay spell, right? But it's a forced opt-in that people really, really hate. People paid for it. They want to play 5th edition. They don't want to do the updating stuff. And now they are forced to when they were told they wouldn't have to. The only reason the platform really exists is to give people the toolbox. You, you subscribe. You get the content that you want. You can use whatever content you want. Well, now you don't get to use whatever content you want. Now you have to use whatever the most modern stuff is. People hate that. But you know. that is to say that these spells, if you have a person that goes, oh, I only know 5th edition, can I just bring my Warlock? And you can go, sure, bring your Warlock. And they come in and they're like, well, I have these specific set of feats. I'm doing these blaster things, this sorcerer split. I have twin spell or even like, yeah, a sorcerer coming with the old twin spell. That character is going to do very busted things in a system that printed a new twin spell. So mm -hmm. are they forced to update? Is it backwards compatible? Does that character get to exist? Can you have old twin spell alongside new twin spell? Technically, yes, but it doesn't look good. It doesn't play well. There's going to be frustrations and conflicts and messiness. I don't... It 
the feats embody that to a higher degree, right? Like you're not going to, I don't think it's going to be an easy conversation to say with a player, well, the old great weapon master was just better. So I'm going to use that, right? <laughs> yes. Like, how do you have the conversations at the end with the player? Now you go, well, I just want to use the new stuff. And they go, well, they said it was backwards compatible. Can I just use the old stuff? Like I've been playing this barbarian for, you know, eight levels or whatever. I've had great weapon master. Why can't I just keep my great weapon master? And you go, well, they changed it for a reason. Yeah. And it's a little bit uncomfortable and awkward now, right? Oh well, yeah, yes. But I mean, if if you're gonna if you're gonna use this system, then uh, I think I mean I guess you can cherry pick which ones you want if everybody at the table agrees on it. But I think yeah. you know the the backward compatibility is if it has the same name, you replace it. But what I'm saying is if it doesn't, if if there if the if the feat doesn't exist in the, in the new book. You know, is it still on the table? I I don't like I don't know what a good answer to that question is. Yeah, well, right? I don't a think lot there of the feet... is a definitive one yet. Yeah, I also think that like so. There's an example: great weapon or not, great weapon fighting got nerfed. I have no idea why, but that specific <laughs> fighting style is worse now. So instead of rerolling ones or twos and keeping the result, you now turn ones and twos into threes, which is just a downgrade, right? Yeah. Like your average damage is substantially worse on what is already one of the worst fighting styles. Now, I, me, as a DM, I'm aware that that nerf seems unjustified. I My default gut reaction is to say, oh, no, just use the old one. The fact that that conversation is happening at all in my head is a problem. Because if I have to know both systems to make a competent game, there's a problem. And this is a first impression, right? This is, we've gone through this book once or twice. I have not DM'd in this for very long. Like, there isn't a ton of faith right now in that i can just use this and won't have any issues i'm gonna fall back and have a messy in-between system i imagine that's gonna lead to a lot of people going from game to game going from dm to dm the rules are gonna be a mess right yes. <laughs> like oh i'm playing i've been handpicking these 10 old things from fifth edition using most of the new rules from the the 2020 4 dnd Mixing them together, and then you go to play with different people, and they've got a different subsection of rules that they're playing with. They're using different older features that our grandfather did. Well, these select six feats are fine. We can use old Lucky and old Sharpshooter, old Great Weapon Master, because we need those. We need the marshals to keep up with the full casters. That might be one table, and the other table is like, no, absolutely not. Those are super, super busted. But we do want to make sure that you know the old updated spells are still good. Contraband elementals is one of my favorite things to do in old fifth edition. That's still allowed. There's gonna be problems, right? Yeah. Well, that's. Uh, I mean. People, people have always played uh, different ways. Every every table has its own way of playing, and that's uh, just going to get more messy now. But uh, exacerbating that problem is bad, right? Yeah, <laughs> I guess so. Um, I don't know. All things considered, I do think this. If you, if I were to start playing this edition, I would want a fresh campaign, and I want to dive in with just this book. I would just right. say the player's handbook, the the. 20 or the what is it 40 subclasses in it that's what's on the table the spells in it that's what's on the table we will learn this new content first there's plenty to explore you don't need to dive into tajas you don't need drake warden right now please just use these is what i would have yeah. my i would pitch to my players i would advocate people try it as well because it's it's a pseudo new system it's it'll probably be better for everyone for that we'll yeah, make a video on updating with that. campaigns and, uh, and it like if you want to use a, the, a subclass that's not included here now you're encouraged to try something a little outside of your comfort zone, and that's good too. Fair. Um, yeah, all things considered, I do think this book is an improvement. I know I just poo pooed on it a lot. Um, <laughs> I think I think on average they fixed a lot of the problems I have with subclasses, and we'll touch on it in a subclass by subclass video. But I'm gonna give the system a tentative thumbs ish up. Like it's fine. I wish it was more. I wish it was different. But it's what we got, and it's fine. It, it should be fun. I'm excited to play with it. I like uh, going back uh, to the book itself. I like some of the art in there. It's uh, they've got uh, some neat fantasy things and meta things with like fantasy characters actually rolling dice and stuff. That's pretty cool. I have a few nitpicks on art, namely that Delina Mage from Magic the Gathering. That exact art got into this book, and that make that makes me irate when they reuse art. But I think that's a personal grievance, not a real actual problem. <laughs> so most of the art here is agreed, phenomenal. Um. All right. Well, I guess that's our video, huh? Yeah, sure. First impressions yeah. of the new 2024 PHP. All right. We got some some fun things to look forward to. Mm -hmm. All right. Thank you, Sam, for being here. And thank you, everyone, for watching. Let us know. Uh, you're going to have some thoughts. Let us know what they are down in the comments section below. 
uh, like and subscribe and stay tuned for more stuff as we dive into this new system. Uh, goodbye.